I think it's fair to say that within the Western world, the vast majority of the population are growing sick and tired of having one particular ideology forced down our throats. An ideology which demands we ignore the evidence of our eyes and ears and think in a way that contradicts reality. Because for a small group of people, and it is a minority within a minority, because they don't accept who they are, they demand the rest of the world affirms them for the person they would like to be. And the best example of this going wrong was the recent pairing of Bud Light and shrieking weirdo and mockery of all things feminine, Dylan Mulvaney. Because at the time of recording, Bud Light's parent company has so far lost $28 billion. That's how sick we are of it. This beer, which was aimed at frat boys and guys having a drink on a Sunday watching the game, those customers cannot relate to the shrieking freak that is Mulvaney. But imagine Dylan Mulvaney, if you bought her, yes, YouTube, I'll use the fucking pronouns, from, say, a discount store. If Dylan Mulvaney was, I was going to say damaged, but more damaged goods. If you bought Dylan Mulvaney from Wish, this is James Rose. I've done videos on this guy. Yes, YouTube guy is a gender neutral term, so you can't fucking touch me. On this guy before. This is someone who uses she and they pronouns, despite being a biological man. And James has the idea that they, because sometimes they identify as a woman, should be able to use female only spaces like swimming pool changing rooms. So this is a biological man who wants to go into a space where there will be women and little girls, where they're vulnerable and in a state of undress, and they want the right to get their cock out. Not only that, but James insists that any woman who objects to seeing male genitalia in a female-only space has internalised misogyny. I'm struggling to think of anything more misogynistic than a man, because they are a man, YouTube, who wants to commit an act of indecency and then play the fucking victim. And it's worth noting that James has had no reassignment surgery. They are a biological man, all intact. And before the term transgender was introduced, James wouldn't be referred to as transsexual, someone with genuine dysphoria who would require surgery. No, James would be a transvestite, a man dressing as a woman for part of a kink or sexual perversion. And that this individual wants the right to go into female-only spaces where they will be the only biological man and get their cock out to me sounds a bit like a sexual predator. However, James has been on TikTok having a moan about how fucking tough their life is. I genuinely think that people don't realize how deeply microaggressions and misgendering affect trans people in like every facet of life. So here's the tiny example. I auditioned slash interviewed for this film intensive and one of the things I talked about in my interview was being a gender fluid actor and wanting to find affirmative spaces to tell queer narratives. One of the administrators who has her pronouns in her email signature pushes me on to the final round with this email that misgenders me three different times. My pronouns are in my email signature, my Zoom name, my resume, my application, and on my film reel. So I respond cordially and I add this. Before I've even met anyone for this final interview, I've had to correct an administrator in front of her boss and I've already had to be on the defense defending my own identity. This just creates an awkward power dynamic that could have been completely avoided. And depending on this person's response, it can either be a non-issue or it puts me at a major disadvantage. This is something cis people just do not deal with. And it's also really easy to get someone's pronouns right, especially when you're typing them out. So, James is trans. James, mate, you've got five o'clock shadow and chest hair. You're barely more feminine than me. Okay, you've got long hair, but I used to have long hair. I used to have hair. I used to have long hair, not because I thought I was a woman, but because I was a heavy metal fan and still am, and a motorcyclist. So let's break down James's points. First off, microaggressions. Now, if you're not aware, a microaggression is a tut, an eye roll, or accidentally using the wrong pronouns. Essentially, something no one should give a fuck about. And which is more serious, accidentally using the wrong pronouns or a man demanding the right to commit indecent acts in front of underage girls? So how about the crime of misgendering? Well, I'm sorry, that isn't really a thing. And I know the woke far left will scream there's a thousand new genders every fucking day and that gender is a social construct, but biological sex is real. There are two genders. Now, misgendering would apply if someone referred to me as a woman to which I would reply, you probably need to get your eyes tested. But it isn't misgendering 
to refer to James as a man because that's what they are. And to be quite blunt, the rest of us have got better things to do than playing make-believe. Can I just say, the mental gymnastics of referring to a biological man as they, them or she is fucking exhausting. As for the wrong pronouns being hurtful, again, James, have a fucking shave. There are more feminine men working at the docks. And this point of having to bring up an issue in front of the woman's boss, no, James, you didn't. The issue is you mentally have never progressed past the point of being a toddler. You're throwing a strop and having a tantrum like a two-year-old who's had a lolly taken away. A moment ago, I referred to men who work at the docks. Just to clarify, I was talking about dockers, not rent boys or male prostitutes. Can we call them male prostitutes anymore? That's gendered. Are they just hookers now? I guess it's probably sex workers. When James refers to an awkward power dynamic, once again, that could have been avoided. I suspect what happened is just for once, the world didn't play along with them. They weren't the center of attention with the spotlight beaming down on them. And it was like James's world fell apart. And when James mentioned that cis people don't have to go through this, once again, when the word cis is used by trans or non-binary people, the really vile ones, it's when they're losing an argument, which is usually when they've been presented with reality, or in this case, as James is doing, when they're setting themselves up to play the victim, because that's what James is doing. Pretending they are being persecuted, even though nothing wrong has actually happened. But the thing that strikes me the most is the sense of entitlement. Use my pronouns, respect my truth, even though we all know it's based on a lie. Affirm who I want to be, even though that means ignoring the evidence of your own eyes. Make me feel special. Now, to any of the pronoun police watching, please bear in mind, this is all very new. The way you're demanding, we change the language we've used for hundreds of years. Now, some people, myself included, simply won't fucking bother. And if you don't like it, tough shit. Everyone else, as ever, thanks for watching. <coughs> Fuck it. <coughs> Ugh. Fucking hay fever. Hay fever's pollen. It's plant spunk. I'm like a Japanese girl at a bukkake party. You like your... Fuck off. And there's the fucking wind again. The wind again. I fucked that up, didn't I? Yes, I am wearing a pride bracelet and a feminism t-shirt, because that's how fucking progressive I am. Start by having... A Oh good, there's a helicopter. <coughs> Ugh. Fuck it.